Welcome everybody to another review from us here at Naples Media. In this review we'll be looking at Audio 2000's AWM6032U dual channel UHF wireless microphone system. We'll be unboxing, setting up and giving you some tips and tricks on how this system works. So with that, let's roll with the review. unit ships well packaged. The outside does detail the content configuration within, so use this to make sure your order is correct. The whole system comes with its own carrying case, which is absolutely excellent for keeping all the items secured, especially when transporting. When unboxed and laid out, you should have one main unit, power supply, instructions, two headset mics, two lavalier lapel mics, two transmitters, two batteries, and one quarter inch jack cable. So let's set up. Okay, first things first, use two new 9 volt batteries, the ones that ship should never be used other than to test the units are working. Test and then throw them away. Slide open the bottom of the compartments of the transmitter units, place your new 9 volt batteries inside and then close again tight. Now you're ready for action. Take the microphone jack, plug in and screw into place. Take the lavalier mic and clip to an area securely. Remember, the headsets mount behind the head, not over, which is a common misconception. Instead, wrap around the back of the head and loop over the ears. Adjust the mic to preference. You can, if needed, adjust the tension on the headset with the band provided. On each transmitter, as you turn to standby, you'll see the battery light blip. If solid, change the batteries immediately. Remember to slide all the way to on to activate. To adjust the wireless signal strength, adjust here. Always secure each transmitter as best as possible using the clip over like so. Plug in the power adapter and switch the main unit on. Now you're ready to turn on your transmitter units. Take each one and turn it on, you'll see the mic light activate on the main unit. This will show you which receiver channel each transmitter is using. Now test the next unit. Plug the jack plug in and start to record. If you use jack cable, you'll be carrying two channels of unbalanced audio, left and right. This is perfect when using adapters for compact, simple recording devices like this Sony MP3 voice recorder or converting to a DSLR. For higher quality recording, you should use two balanced XLR cables and connect to the XLR ports provided. Connect the main unit with each balance cable directly to your mixing console or field recorder such as this Tascam DR40 or a Zoom H series. Using a set of headphones, you can plug into your field recorder and monitor your recordings in real time. Always check for peaking. The lavalier mics have a windsock. Leave this on at all times, even indoors. The windsock can struggle in high wind, so drop the mic's gain until this is reduced. To adjust each transmitter's gain, use the level settings on the main unit. A word to the wise, keep your transmitter units around 70% and only adjust as needed from the main unit. This will give you total control centrally. Audio 2000 have done very well to price this unit and produce what we feel is an excellent entry-level prosumer wireless mic system. It's well priced, reasonably built and in short worth every penny of its $130 price tag. If you need additional units receivers, contact Audio 2000 who will ship the units so they're not on conflicting frequencies. If you're filming a wedding or an event and need that close quality recording and budget is of a concern, we highly recommend this unit. It has served us flawlessly even for outdoor weddings. We hope this has been helpful. Here are a couple of clips of the unit in action. Please subscribe, good luck with your filming and bless you all. And again, Martin, if you want to get a shot of me standing here, saying that this is a good distance. Give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me really well. So that's good. So this is about the diff distance we want to do. Okay, we're recording now. Yep. And we have a good wind coming across and we're going to remove the wind sock. And we're going to see how much sound interference we have with the wind going, with the wind sock off. 